was an advertising copywriter at the time and I had written a teenage fiction novel but I'd never written for theatre before and the agency I worked for went bust and strangely enough I looked in the Age newspaper under writer and there's never ever ads for writers but there was this particular uh, week that I looked writer researcher wanted for production of The Lost Children as it was known then, and it was the Orbitary Theatre Company, uh, one of the uh, three um, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander theatre companies around Australia. And uh, I applied for the position and I was fortunate enough to get it. At the time I then got a job, a full-time job, so they split the job in two and uh, Antoinette Braybrook did the research and I did the writing. It took six years. <laughs> Uh, there had been a workshop prior to the script being sent to Playbox, um, a three-week workshop with uh, a writer and dra dramaturge, and so it had gone through that process and then up until rehearsals it was still being rewritten. But I was pregnant at the time and so I went to the first three days of rehearsals and then went away and came to opening night with my three-week-old baby who cried just at the right poignant moments. <laughs> so I wasn't very involved in the uh, rehearsal uh, uh, process and in some ways I think that's a good model because uh, the great thing about theatre is it's collaborative and it was in very good hands with Wesley Enoch directing and a beautiful cast who were all highly committed to it and so you have people who are expert in their areas working on the play and bringing it to life so it was great and I love to go to opening night and be surprised by what the the cast and the director and all the people creatives have brought to the story. I have Aboriginal heritage through my mother and I'd grown up always knowing I was Aboriginal but hadn't had a close connection with the Aboriginal community so this was an opportunity for me to become more connected and find out why I ha felt so strongly in myself connected. Um, so it was a learning experience the whole way and I did feel a huge responsibility. I'm not a stolen generations person and neither is my mother. And to, to be the conduit for these kind of stories, you know, I, I did feel both that was a privilege and a burden, you know, the, that responsibility to get it right. And I do remember when it premiered, I had an Aboriginal woman come up to me at the end. I didn't know her. And she put her head down and she said, you got it right. And for me, that was so important to get it right for those people who had had those experiences. Well, it premiered as part of the Melbourne International Festival and then it, uh, the season was extended. And the previous year, the Bringing Them Home report had come out, and I, I kind of thought, oh, we've missed the boat really with Stolen because, it, you know, the attention was on the Stolen Generations at that time, remembering that I had started to write it six years before. And, uh, but in fact, the, the, uh, it did get very good, uh, the response was great, and then uh, Playbox brought it back the following year and did a Victorian tour, and it just seemed to grow every year. And then in 2000, of course, there was the walk across the bridge and the play happened to be playing in, in Sydney at the time as well. So, you know, it just seemed to build. I think it was Senator Heron said, there is no stolen generations. <laughs> um, and something about at most three children out of ten were taken, something like that, words to that effect. And I think that that ha also had a galvanising effect on people and they walked across the bridge at that time and I think they went to see Stolen as well so it was great for obviously non-Aboriginal people but also really particularly for Aboriginal people to have their stories told. That's an interesting question because I'm not sure that it's always top of mind when I write plays because they often, I, I'm trying to write from the Aboriginal perspective so I'm not so concerned about the response from non-Aboriginal people. It probably in my academic writing came out because I was commissioned at that particular time to write an Aboriginal themed play for two non-Aboriginal actors and so that's when I was very interested in how, um, what the protocols are for non-Aboriginal performers accessing Aboriginal themes. 
However, I think more broadly in the, um, my working life, I do think that many um, non-Aboriginal people feel an anxiety around Aboriginal issues and they don't want to get it wrong. You know, they're, they're well-intentioned often, but they're nervous about making mistakes. And, <laughs> and I think they, they want to be experts on something um, when sometimes you just have to admit that you're not an expert on something and that's that's a more easier path in to, to and I'm still learning I still do that in Aboriginal communities I'm going in not, I try not to go in is in as an expert on something and I think that's um, you know you allow for two-way learning then and I think the other really interesting issue around that is um, Obviously, there's quite a few requests for, from schools to do stolen. They want to do it as a, a school performance. And I will ask uh, Aboriginal people participating in that process. And often there's not, that they don't have Aboriginal students at the school. And so I encourage them to make a connection in their local communities and find someone who can talk about the stories and, and make sure that, you know, they're doing it the right way. So I'm not necessarily against non-Aboriginal young people accessing those stories um, and performing them um, as long as they do it in a respectful and as long as they seek um, I suppose a bit of wisdom from their local communities. As many of my plays have been commissioned or a couple of them have been commissioned from the obituary and their mission is to write primarily for the Aboriginal audiences. And so I think I just do that automatically. I try and, um, even Stolen, I didn't really set the context for, you know, when the play, if you read the play on paper, it doesn't explain what the Stolen Generations is, really. It's really from the experiential point of view. So, because Aboriginal people understand the Stolen Generations, and so I didn't need to set a context, really. Um, so, first and foremost, my audience, I want to see Aboriginal people going to see their stories or, you know, stories that are told through me, um, performed. Um, and it's great when non-Aboriginal people also want to be part of that story because it's our shared history and I think that's really important. And the response, well, I love going to community nights um, because there's always much more laughter and they feel free to laugh at. I don't consider myself to be a funny writer, but I do really um, value when the actors are able to bring out humour in the scripts because they are often quite grim topics. Mm. And uh, Aboriginal audiences feel the freedom to, to laugh at that. So that, I love that.